Now, if you have been interested in Japanese history for a while, you may have started to hear or already be well aware that there is a bit of an issue, specifically when it comes to terminology, this being in regard to the term feudal or feudalism, saying feudal Japan. And if you are someone who is new to this controversy, don't worry, I'm here to explain it, or at least try to. You see, it all comes down to how people conceptualize history, and I mean that in several forms. Firstly, unless you are someone who really studies history, there is a good chance you will label large periods of time one specific and simplified way. Classical, medieval, renaissance, that sort of thing. And then of course there is the idea of the Eurocentric view that plenty of people in the West largely place upon cultures across the world whenever similarities can be found. The last reason is perhaps broad appeal. Maybe you do know the difference, but you are aware that the majority of people don't. You see this on book jackets, in documentaries, and even here on my own channel. Yes, I am guilty of this. I have not once but quite often referred to pre-modern Japan simply as feudal Japan. Not because I don't know that it's become some sort of taboo, but because I know that is how most people conceptualize Japanese history and society prior to the Meiji Restoration. But there is plenty more to this topic, as it sort of becomes a bit of a rabbit hole. Now, for the most part, I'm going to be referencing how this whole situation is laid out by Peter Deuce in his book Feudalism in Japan, as he sort of sifts through the history of our usage of the word feudalism and the wider debate it causes. But I also need to mention that I took this subject to the Japanese History Discord server, where plenty of other very knowledgeable people chimed in to give their opinions on the matter as well. It is from all of this that I make this video here today, to hopefully help you guys come to a better understanding of the topic. But to start with, let's first look to understand the term feudalism itself. What does it actually mean? And this is where it can immediately get tricky, because there is a couple of different ideas of what feudalism is. And this may stem largely from the fact that it is actually an idea in retrospect. The idea of feudalism in Europe was an idea thought of years later, perhaps in the 17th century, as a way to define the land tenure, legal customs, and political institutions of old. And this is sort of the primary way many countries in the West have come to view what feudalism is, using the term to largely describe the structure and society of Europe throughout the Middle Ages. A system of military and political organization in which armed warriors or knights rallied to leaders who gave them grants of land in return for personal service. However, this concept is sort of challenged by another competing idea brought about by Marxist historians, who instead view the idea of feudalism as a universal historical stage through which all societies must pass before the emergence of capitalism. The book I am using by Peter Dews is a bit older and thus this idea may be outdated, but at the very least the idea of it does seem like one that might still arise from time to time today, especially in our modern society where terms like capitalism and socialism are constantly being thrown around. But there is something that both of these ideas have in common. They both focus on and reference a more primitive social structure set before the emergence of the world we know today. And this is where Japan comes in. Japan is unique because, for a time throughout its history, it did appear very similar to what the Western idea of feudalism looked like. Now, the dates of this resemblance can be debated. The example that Deuce puts out is somewhere from the 1300s to 1600s, so almost the Muramachi through Azuchi Momoyama period, and coming to an end roughly around the start of the Edo period. However, I am sure arguments can be made that can push the start date further back into the Kamakura period. And this creates the start of our next problem, because now we are moving on from definitions to examining social institutions outside of Europe but with a very Eurocentric view. All of a sudden, we are now applying European concepts and ideas onto a unique and distinct culture all its own, which, interestingly enough, is something the Japanese would come to do as well themselves, after the Meiji Restoration when they began to heavily westernize. But on the other side of that sentiment, you might be questioning, is that really a bad thing to do? Especially if it helps people in the West understand aspects of pre-modern Japanese society a little better. I am not going to answer yes or no. That is not up to me. What does become a wider issue, however, is because there is this distinction of a certain period in Japanese history appearing similar to European feudalism, in common pop culture slash history, all of pre-modern Japanese history then tends to get labeled by many people as simply feudal Japan. And once again, yes, I am guilty of doing this too. 
Feudalism is a very broad and over-encompassing term, and this has led to even historians debating on if it should even be used anymore at all, with some believing it to be regrettable that it even exists in the first place. It's a word that can often get compared to other wider terms such as imperialism, revolution, totalitarianism, and maybe even medieval. All terms that allow people to characterize what can be considered large and complicated historical situations, which is yet another reason it gets applied to pre-modern Japan, for no other reason rather than simplicity. But this then hurts our understanding of history as a whole, and is why so many people have instead come to refer to Japan prior to the Meiji Restoration as pre-modern Japan, old Japan, or even just by each appropriate period name. What so many people often define as feudal Japan, just like feudal Europe, went through decades of evolution. Massive shifts not only political and societal, but also cultural. The Japan of the 1300s was vastly different from the Japan of the 1400s or 1500s. And of course you could dive in and go even further than that, taking it decade by decade or year by year. There's a great video by Karolina Zabroska called Period Drama Costume Designers These Days. It highlights this idea perfectly. Any ideas? Which part of the century? Why does that matter? Because it's a century. You wouldn't say 1950s and 1990s are the same, would you? Yeah, no. No one would notice. Yeah, this kind of ruins the whole creativity aspect of it. Like, At the end of it all, what I am trying to get across to you is that the term feudalism is very complicated. Not only in its origins and many meanings, but also how we choose to apply it. There is much more consideration that should go into its usage than there currently is by the vast majority of people. And although the historical community seems pretty unified in this regard, I have yet to see it really bleed over on a popular level. Because regardless of how we view the term, branding and marketing will still always know the best way to appeal to a wide audience by using the term in the way that most people understand. I mean, think about it like this. If you were talking to someone who has little to no knowledge of Japanese history and you told them to think of feudal Japan, I imagine images of samurai and castles would pop into their head. Now, what if you instead told them to picture Japan in the Muromachi period? They'd be much more confused. And that is where I think the deeper moral question lays. As someone who makes videos talking about samurai history, I can see both sides of it. On one hand, I certainly understand the skepticism and dismissal many historians have with it. But, on the other hand, I totally know how it can be used to help an audience better understand what you are talking about. It's complicated, and I think in the future I will for sure be using less of it, but I'm not sure if I am willing to abandon it entirely just yet. Not just from a marketing approach, but also because I do think there is enough meat there that we can really get into when discussing similarities between the idea of feudalism found in Europe during the Middle Ages compared to the concepts that are reminiscent in Japan. Which is of course fascinating, being that both Europe and Japan obviously evolved separate from each other. But what do you think? Are you someone who is completely against the usage of the word feudalism when discussing pre-modern Japan? Or do you think it is not entirely harmful to generalize history in that regard, specifically for the sake of helping more people conceptualize what you are referring to? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And with that said, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most interesting.